Hey everyone, it's Matt aka Tech Ranger, and today I wanted to make a video on 4K displays and what you might need to upgrade when you're buying a new console or if you even really need to upgrade in the first place. This video is going to be taking a look at what you might need in terms of a display, but then also do you want that display to actually show 4K? Does your game also support 4K 120Hz? Do a lot of games even support 4K 120Hz? These are things that you want to ask yourself, and if you just want that sweet resolution, that 4K resolution, then you can buy a TV that's 4K and will do that, but you might not get the refresh rate. One is a little bit more of a given, the other one is a little bit more in terms of a guessing game, but hopefully this video clears up a lot of that confusion and we can get into what you might need to upgrade or if you even really need to upgrade at all. To preface this video, this is more geared towards the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X, but the PS5 and the PS5 Digital Edition does do a lot of the same things that the Xbox Series X does in terms of resolution and frame rates. The goal of this video will be three things. We're going to look at what kind of monitor or TV you already have and if you really need to upgrade at all. We're going to be looking at TV and monitor recommendations from me and specifically on a budget because we're not going to spend $1,000 on a TV or a monitor, okay? And we're going to sum up what we went over in the video and hopefully that gives you a really good picture, no pun intended, of what you need to do when you pick up that Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S. Now without further ado, let's jump into the video. I see a lot of videos on YouTube saying that you should buy this TV or that TV or this monitor or that monitor. The cases in which you would really actually have to upgrade right now are really about frame rate and resolution. And I say that mainly because there's a lot of people already out there with a, let's say a 4K TV or a monitor that can achieve higher frame rates. If you want to spend, you know, a thousand dollars on a new monitor or a new TV and you have that money and you're cool with it, then go right ahead. But if you currently already have a 4K TV, for example, or a 1440p monitor, you might not really need to go out and buy anything and just you can buy the console or at least try to find one and buy the console. But in this point, you know, 4K, 1440p, those are the sweet spots. I would not buy a 1080p monitor, even if it has a higher refresh rate that you want, unless you really don't care about the resolution. But man, I'm telling you, you want to buy a at least a 1440p monitor or a 4k tv at this point in the game because it really does change the way your games look especially when you're coming from a 1080p tv or 1080p monitor the reason you won't find a 1440p tv is because in the grand scheme of things the resolution increase from 1080p to 1440p on let's say a 55 inch screen is not that noticeable but when you jump from 1080p to 4k which is 2 million pixels to 8 million pixels that's a lot of space for those pixels to to be in so when you're going from a monitor that's 1080p to 1440p it's a nice resolution bump but you do see a lot more of the sharpness and things that 1440p brings as well as the expanded color palette for that resolution the other thing to look at would be is your refresh rate on your current TV. Most TVs and most monitors have a 60 hertz refresh rate, which is kind of like the standard for most TVs out there. But this is important because if you want to at least take advantage of some of the games that actually hit 120 frames per second, you're not going to be able to see that on your 60 hertz display. But at the same time, there's not going to be a ton of games, at least maybe in the first six months of these consoles that are really even going to try and hit that 120 frames per second. But depending on how much you really care about that, if you play a lot of competitive games and want to see that, then you'll want to be looking out for the monitors that can do 120 hertz, 144 hertz, uh, I think is usually the norm for a monitor. Unless you want 4K as well, because if you want 4K 120 hertz, you do have to have HDMI 2.1 in order to achieve that. So hopefully that helped you answer that first question. And in this next part, I'm gonna give you some suggestions, maybe what to look for, but also like what actual products I would recommend buying on a budget. The Xbox Series X is already $500, so I don't know about you, but I'm not really willing to go over the $1,000 limit of buying a TV and a new console.
as stated earlier in this video, I'm not going to try to recommend things that are like $1,000 because that just doesn't make sense when you're buying a $500 console. So my first recommendation is actually for a monitor, which I actually currently own and have been using consistently for about a month or two now. So I think I can safely recommend it. It's not a ton of money, obviously, compared to the Xbox Series X, that's like more than half of the console itself. But there's not much out there that's actually less in price than this for a monitor that's 120 hertz. Obviously, that'll vary over the course of the next year or so but right now this is actually one of the cheaper ones you can get and it's actually a pretty good monitor I have some examples playing in the background just to kind of show you how bright the display actually is it is a TN panel so it doesn't get as bright as maybe say a TV it's a small trade-off for a monitor that looks decent enough at the 1440p resolution and packs at 120 Hertz frame rate so if that all sounds good to you then this might be the monitor for you before we move on to TVs, I want to take a look at one more monitor. This one's from LG, and it does do a lot of the same things that the Asus does that we looked at before, but this one actually packs a lot of the uh, features that uh, LG TVs actually have now. It's almost double the brightness of the previous display we looked at. It has 1440p, 144Hz, and it does have variable refresh rate, so you're not going to get that screen sharing. This display is also much better to watch movies and TV on versus just gaming, so that's also something to keep in mind for the increased price. With any monitor purchase you make, please read the description and the specifications so you don't get duped into buying something that's not going to work for you. Now moving over to TVs, I kind of gravitate towards the LGs, and the NanoCell 85 is actually the one that comes with a HDMI 2.1 port. So not only will you have a nice looking picture, these are IPS panels, which again, I won't get into the technical details, but they're very bright panels. And it ticks all the boxes, it's got HDR, 4K, 120Hz, variable refresh rate, which is something you can do on the Xbox right now, that actually syncs the display with the output of your console so that you don't see any screen tearing. This would be my suggestion if you want the best of both worlds but don't necessarily want to break the bank but are okay with going over the price of the actual console. wrap everything up I would definitely ask yourself that first question what TV do you have right now is it really worth upgrading in the first place do you want picture quality or do you want to try to do both this video hopefully gave you a few different options to look at and hopefully gave you a few answers to some of the questions you have if, if you should really even upgrade at all thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it I took a few weeks to actually put all this together and get all the information that I needed to so I really appreciate a like on the video and a comment down below with any questions I love talking about TVs and monitors and all tech things related around gaming. So definitely put those in the comments down below and I will catch you all in the next video. If you're celebrating Thanksgiving today, happy Thanksgiving. If not, have a great rest of your day.